Let's see it. When radio was raw and wild, PJ was in charge. Producing radio and TV for some of the greats in the industry, PJ has seen it all. From Disco Duck to What the F***. This is Streaming Legends with PJ. Yo, we are excited on the pod today. The master, and I mean master of voiceovers, and my buddy, who is truly an icon in this industry, Mr. Joe Cipriano, right here with us. And we're going to find out how Joe started, his technique for success, and who Joe obsesses about that has driven him to be as successful as he is and keeps driving him every day. That's all coming up right here on Streaming Legends right now. And welcome in, Joe Cipriano. So happy to have you with us. Paul, thank you so much. It's so great to to be here. I've watched uh, your, your podcast. Love the Jack Silver one, yeah, uh, which was so fun. Love Thank it. you. Thank yeah. you very much. With that. Just to have you on, you know, let me start the butt kissing now. <laughs> I mean, you are you are a master of what you do. There's no getting around that. So it's whatever okay that is. It. Yeah, yes. well, <laughs> well, whatever it is for people, for somebody that's not on this planet that wouldn't know what Joe Cipriano does. How about listening to this? Animation Domination presents a quadruple feature Whoa. that'll make you laugh so hard you're gonna get abs of steel. What's going on, B minus? In an instant. President's car is now turning on to Elm Street. Your nation was shattered. Her courage. How would you like him remembered? United the world. There should be more horses. Jackie, rated R, now playing. And now, the host of the 57th Annual Primetime Emmy Awards, Ellen DeGeneres. They're single, they're parents, and they're looking out for each other. Who are these people? They're my village. Uh, ruined it. Well, they're trying. Single parents, this fall on ABC. When Marge Simpson gets two big enhancements. Mom! It's the biggest thing to ever hit Springfield. Yeah. <laughs> How much fun is all that? What are you thinking about when you when you listen back to those? What do you think about? I, um, actually, your selections, uh, I was very impressed because it shows a nice range. Uh, you know, what I normally do, uh, not normally, but I think the bulk of my work is comedy. So comedy promos, uh, comedy, you know, movie trailers, you know, that sort of thing. And of course, The Simpsons that we just heard uh, on the very end there on the tail, that's, that's the gig that changed my life completely. I was working at Kiss FM with, right. with you guys. Right. And uh, may I, can, I'll, I'll tell a quick story about no, that. No, please, uh, let's take uh, us back and tell yeah. us how it started. Uh, we'll because, think. wow, that's really, I mean, I had been doing voiceover before, but I was also working in radio and radio was supporting me, you know, yeah. so that I could pursue voiceover. Yeah. And um, so I had done some things. I was working for ABC doing Saturday morning cartoons I was doing the Bugs Bunny and Tweety show. That goes way back to like 83. Uh, in 82, I had done the trailers for Fast Time to Ridgemont High, which was my first really big gig, you know? And when I realized how, how long you work on a freaking trailer, you know, that last <laughs> two and a half minutes, you know, that thing went on for months that we were recording things. But fast forward, doing all those little bits and pieces, but still relying on radio, to be the bulk of my income. And my wife, Ann, was working in television. She was at KABC, Channel 7, as a news writer and producer. Mm -hmm. So together, you know, we were, we were a team. And I happened to be on the air one afternoon, filling in for Big Ron O'Brien. Oh, the your old stomping ground. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just a fluke. Uh, uh, you know, I was doing weekends, fill-in, production. And by the way, Rick Dees, who, you know, we both... Uh, uh, love uh, yes was always so kind to me uh, it was unbelievable anything that I would do he would write a note that was it felt made me feel like I was doing good work and, and felt special but I was on the air filling in for Big Ron uh, that week and on um, one day in August of 1988 uh, the head of promos for a brand new network that had just come on the air uh, called Fox um, <laughs> was driving home in traffic listening to Kiss FM, and I happened to be on the air, and swirling about in his mind was, how are we going to make this brand new fourth network different than the established three? 
Right. Um, what can we do that's different? And they were already going with bold graphics and, and colors and a real hip cutting edge kind of feel. But then they were also working on the sound of it besides the programming, which was crazy cutting edge. And he heard me and he goes, that's a voice that I think could work. And he literally called our receptionist, Paul, at, at KISS FM. Oh, my God. Uh, on his brick of a cell phone in yeah. 1988. <laughs> and how do I get in touch with Joe Cipriano? And she, I remember her ringing me in uh, or calling me in the studio and saying, hey, this guy wants to book you for a, a voiceover or something. And I said, oh, my God, tell, give him my you know, agent's number. Yeah. And that was it. Uh, wow. I started going in. They tried me out. Uh, I started on one show on the, uh, uh, the late night show, the talk show, Joan Ritter's show, doing promos for that. And, wow. and then it just kind of built, you know. I remember um, I was on Totally Hidden Video. Right. Right, which was uh, Fox's first number one show. We were number one on Saturday night. And yes. I was fortunate I, I did a lot of episodes on that. And I remember walking in and, and you were on the air at Kiss at that in the afternoon. And you said, PJ, we, I just did your promo. I just did your promo. It was great, you know. It, it, oh, that was so great. Oh, my so God. Great. That's a yeah. great story. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. No, that yeah. was fun, you know. But, yeah, yeah. yeah to have that and, and for you to do, do that at that level, that had to be a shock to you. Because I don't think you were doing stuff before. You were doing voiceover stuff before. But mm -hmm. to get that shot at a new network and kind of to kick it off is very unusual. I think. It, very, very unusual. And, you know, at the time, when you think about it, uh, there was not much going on in the world of cable or anything like that, if anything. Right. You right. Know? I mean, you had HBO maybe and, you know, a few things that, uh, but um, there were only three networks. So that meant at best, there were about six individuals or, or maybe a couple more that were actually doing network promo. And they all sounded like Ernie Anderson. You know, <laughs> yeah, they did. Speaking of Kiss FM, the voice yeah. of a uh, right. long time. And then I came in with this much lighter voice. And it, it was a, kind of a shift, you know. I remember the guy that was driving in his car, the head of promos, his name is Bob Bibb. And uh, just talking to him about two weeks ago, uh, he really changed my life. And um, he said his impression of my voice was, sounded like a, a, a college guy just a few years out of college, young and, you know, uh, excited about what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, always a smile in his voice and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, that's, that's what he went with. And wow. yeah. And, and thankfully, you know, the, the th it's like radio again, Paul, in that, that when, when you change program directors, whether you're going to make it through, you know, the next program director or will, you know, he or she bring somebody in, you know, that they've worked with before. That's, and, uh, that's kind of I what I was... I a lot ahead. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask yeah. you about that because I know how it is in radio. And when they shift PDs, program directors, then the next guy, you know, oh, do I like this guy? Da, 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 da. So you go through some of that as well. And you have to make that leap each time. Yeah, you do. I mean, uh, there and there were some some dips and, and some scary times. But, you know, with Bob and, and his uh, co-head of promos uh, was a guy named Luke Goldstein. And, and they they came over from NBC and they got a pretty sweet deal direct from Barry Diller because they really wanted them. They loved what NBC was doing with their on air marketing. Mm -hmm. So they brought them over and gave them a heck of a deal. Do it for two years. And then we'll give you a TV movie deal. You guys, oh. you know, will, you know, blank check on the, on the TV movies. And um, so they were, were gone. That was 88. So by 90, there was somebody new that came in and that guy wasn't a fan. And uh, I was doing all the comedies uh, at Fox. Don LaFontaine was doing all of the dramas. And then there were a couple other specials, Peter Cullen, uh, uh, was doing some stuff and, and, and a few others on the drama side, but I had all the comedies. But the new guy that came in, the head of marketing, decided he wanted a different voice on every single show. So I went from doing like 10 shows to doing one show. Wow. And I thought, wow, that was quick, you know. <laughs> but thankfully, he was released within months. They didn't like what, what he was doing. Brought in the next person, Jeff Calnan, who was a huge fan of what I was doing and put me back on everything along with Don LaFontaine. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. And then at your level where you're like, you're basically working for like five, six, seven, eight, nine networks, 
you've got that extrapolated, right? You're worried. I mean, you have to worry about all these people changing and it's, it's yes. a lot, you know? Yeah. It, it's, mean, it's worse than radio. I yeah. mean, we always <laughs> would worry about radio and how long can you keep the gig and, and all of that. And every time ratings came out, you know, your, your neck was on the line. And, yeah. uh, but in, in TV, uh, the stakes are, are so much higher and there are so many people involved with it. And if something is not performing uh, to the level that, they expected it there there's something wrong yeah. and it's usually not the the person that's uh coming up with all the the marketing it must be the that voice guy <laughs> he's, he's the problem yeah <laughs> let's change that up let's get, get more, rid of him <laughs> let's get more sarcastic and let's get meaner right. let's do right absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. i think that's what abc has going for it now don't they have that sarcasm they kind do. Of, yeah. They do. And, and uh, all of the networks are, are kind of defining themselves in, in different ways. And, you know, we're looking at what, 30 something years past when when I started in it. And thankfully, you know, I've continued on in it, uh, you know, at that level, at the highest level, doing every single comedy on a network that really lasted to about 2012, something like that. And then they started going with the fact that, okay, now that we're doing online and CBS has an online presence, ABC does, NBC, oh, everybody does. They would rather have a voice, if at all, because now they're kind of getting away from voices in the promos. If they're gonna have one, they'd like to have this one voice for this one show that kind of follows it to mm -hmm. all the platforms. Yeah. So that old, um, which was a, uh, you know, like golden, you know, yeah. it was unbelievable ride uh, to be the voice of all of the shows. Whenever they added a new show, put yep. Joe on it. When, yeah. You know, another one comes on, that one dies after, you know, three weeks, another show, put Joe on it, you know, <laughs> and the same with Don and, and yeah. you know, all the others as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, now it's, it's a, a little different. Thankfully, finally, after all these years, women, are, are in promo and in promo yeah. in a big way, ABC, NBC, um, have finally gotten it. You know, they, they, they were going by that old kind of Ernie Anderson thing where you had to have a big, deep voice for people to notice what you're doing. Right. And, you know, it's not like that anymore. Now they want voices that sound like real people. You know, I, people I think so. Voice. And I think you were actually a leader in that because your voice is a more fun voice. You know, it, when I think of your voice, I think of fun and, you know, more lively, you know, I mean, Don Thank LaFontaine you. is the in, in a world, you know, right. that guy, but, yes. you know, which sounds great and it sounds great in a movie theater and everything, but your voice always indicates fun and kind of, you know, lighthearted excitement. Thank you. And, yeah. yeah, I was kind of in a, in a hammock in between coming out of the big, strong, bold announcer type thing into what I was doing, which was a younger sound, but still with kind of like an announcer's type twinge to it. Right. In that hammock to now where it, it's really so natural. Yeah. Uh, there's no pushing, there's no selling. It, you know, it's just a tonight on CBS, you know, I mean, it, it's very, very um, personable and real. You know? and, and I know you teach uh, master classes mm -hmm. in, in this stuff too. And is that kind of the key to it? Is it, are you, when you do it, are you thinking of somebody that you're talking to when you're actually doing uh, something like that? So you make it as personable as possible? Yes, uh, I, I always did. And I think both you and I, you know, the same way in radio as right. well. I mean, you know, they call it broadcasting, but really if you can connect with, with one person. And I would always imagine, usually, uh, you know, it was a, a young guy or a young girl that they could be still in college, you know, they're watching TV or or maybe they're out of college and they're in their first job and starting their careers. And I was always thinking about connecting with them, yeah. especially with the programming that Fox had. Right, know, right. In, in doing that. So, yeah, I remember yeah. sitting in the KISS FM studio, you know, that beautiful studio that oh, we had. Yeah. Was that the 11th floor? I think 11th it, floor. Yeah. yeah. And looking out that window, being on the air, it was such a heady thing. And, and looking out, you would look across Sunset Boulevard and th there was just, houses after houses after stores and looking down towards Wilshire Boulevard and you go wow somebody in one of those buildings could have the radio on right now and is listening to this radio station exactly hear me. you know exactly. It's, a, it's a pretty it's an exciting kind of thing which is the same excitement I had for 
television. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I remember when I thought about this is what I would love to do. How exciting would it be to be the voice of a television network talking to America? You know, yeah. right? It just it just, it just yeah. got me jazzed. Oh, okay. it's and, and it should. And you've got yeah. radio in your blood, like I do. And you know, and I'll tell you a funny story because I know you took over for Big Ron O'Brien when he was out, and that's how you really got discovered yeah. on Fox and all that. Big Ron O'Brien, such a character, as you know, I went in two quick stories. I went in one day and I heard this rumbling in the snack room and he's got the entire machine tilted over, Joe, and he's shaking it like and stuff is falling out from the top and sliding down. Oh, my gosh. And, and he turns around, he looks at me and with one arm, he swoops up about five or six different things and he goes, <laughs> you know, that laugh he did. And he goes walking away. And just that, that's how he got his food, you know, because he for those that don't know, big, big, big Ron O'Brien was a big, big man. Boy. Yeah, big, big, man. big. Yeah, big, yeah. yeah. that's and for sure. Yeah. The, the other story that's so funny is when he got in trouble on Kiss FM because he would go in in the afternoons and actually pump up the transmitter, which I thought Jerry Burnham <laughs> was going to lose what was left of his hair. God bless him. Oh, my gosh. He would pump it up to 103 percent. I when never he was knew on that. Yeah. Wow. So, so that it would slop over, obviously, into other areas, you know, not not that Kiss FM was a huge station, huge, but he wanted it even bigger. But yeah, yeah. those two stories always stuck with me on him because I think that just shows you. What that, those are great. That that yeah. is Big Ron. And you know what? I kind of grew up listening to him, you know, yeah, right. I lived in Connecticut as a kid and I used to listen to Super CFL out of Chicago booming in at night. Yeah, and that big Ron was six to ten p.m. on oh, CFL, wow. and yeah. uh, and then to get to work with him was wow, you know, yeah. and get to know him. Oh my and, god! And he yeah. was a great jock. He really was. He oh, was really so entertaining good. and yeah. fun. You yeah. know, so when it, he's gone, yeah, but I he, know, I know, such a treasure. He was oh, amazing. Yeah. He was amazing. Yeah, I wanted to go back because you said something about a movie trailer that mm -hmm. interested me. It. How long does it take to do a movie trailer? Because it. Yeah, uh, you know, this is what I found out with Fast Times. Uh, yeah. I just happened to get booked on that uh, by a company called Flamingo Films. And the guy's name was Jim Gibbons, uh, who went on to kind of head up uh, marketing for films for a, a major movie company. And uh, he, again, heard, I think he heard my demo. And he thought, okay, kid movie, uh, we got this new creative guy who wrote this into uh you know uh, cameron crow yeah. uh you know who <laughs> is his first first movie you know yeah. and it, it would and this guy's on the radio uh you know uh <laughs> we're going after teens uh let, let's let's try him out and i you know i i had been doing a couple of promos here and there you know this was 1982 i was uh -huh. pretty fresh uh here in la um i had moved here december of 1980 and um, so I was lucky and I started to book some stuff, you know, early on. And I just thought it'd be like one of those. It's a one off. You know, you go and you do yeah. a 30 second thing and, and you're done and maybe they'll call you if something else comes <laughs> up. But it was like, you know, you do one read with a, a you're not reading the picture like we do in, in promo. We actually look at the promo running while we're reading and right. you dodge in and out of the sound on tape. And with this, you're reading wild is what it's called. And at the time in 1982, there was no digital. And the way they recorded you is they called it, we're going to record them on mag. So it was the audio track that's on film. Oh. Uh, they would just run a, 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 a film recorder and you would be on the, on the mag track. And that's how they physically would edit you in from the mag track, you know, in, wow. along with the, with the video. And um, so I did one, you know, session went for 45 minutes. He got everything from me. We literally, I, I think we probably recorded at least twice a week, sometimes three times a week for about three months on, on that movie. Because uh, yeah, they started uh, early on uh, in getting the marketing for it right. And I did radio and I did TV and I did the, uh, the uh, trailer as well. You, it's funny. It's it's all it's on YouTube. You can you pull it up if you pull up uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High trailer. Yeah, uh, I, I sound like I'm about 12 years old. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to we're going to do that. We're going to pull it up. 
And if we can stick it in here right now, Joe, we're going to do it and play it. Boom. Universal Pictures presents everything you always wanted to do in high school with everyone you always wanted to do it with. Hey, bud. <laughs> Let's party. They're the students of Ridgemont High. <laughs> Brad Hamilton, the fast food king. I shall serve no fries for their time. It says 100% guaranteed, you moron. Mister, if you don't shut up, I'm going to kick 100% of your ass. Charles Jefferson, <laughs> a man with a mission. Oh, gnarly. Linda Barrett, not exactly the girl next door. Awesome. Totally awesome. And Jeff surfs up Spicoli. People on lewds should not drive. See Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> ah, the magic. Ah, it's so magical. That's amazing. That's a, so, and then you've done other movie trailers. Obviously, we played Jackie and there's, you have others, but has it, is it always that same process? It no, takes it, that it, long? It, it actually, um, you know, nowadays, uh, it, it seems like there are, yes, multiple sessions over and over again yeah. for because there are multiple tags and and, and little changes. Um, so they're always bringing you in for something else. And it could be, you know, two lines, you know. Um, but yeah, they, they usually take a good long time. I don't know if they, they really go for, for three months. Uh, I haven't had one quite like that. But my buddies like uh, Scott Rummel and Ashton Smith, who, who do a ton of trailers. In fact, that's their the bulk of their work. Oh, They're yeah. constantly working on campaigns. And you know, the thing is with with trailers, if they go with a voiceover artist, they expect you to be available always, yeah, twenty four seven, because they've made this commitment to you. You're going to be the voice of this campaign. You, we always have to have you. When we have any spot that's being reworked or redone, we got to make sure that, that you're available. I was working on the Hugh Jackman movie, the, the, what was that called? The Greatest? When he played, um, you know, there's, there's a sucker born every minute. Uh, oh, great, yeah. Uh, and uh, I was working on that. Mm -hmm. I was only doing a couple of radio spots on it, but I remember I was on the East Coast and my phone was, Anne was on the West Coast, I was on the East Coast. <laughs> Uh, I was sleeping. It was three o'clock in the morning. My phone kept kind of buzzing. And, and then finally I picked it up because this was ridiculous. And it was my manager, Paul Wintner, saying, dude, they need you. <laughs> there are right three now? tags that have to be done. This thing is going out immediately oh and God. you have to get up. And it was three o'clock in the morning. And you know how your voice is when you get up in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm going to walk into the studio. Thank God nowadays we have our, our own studios in our homes. Right. But, you know, to get ready, you know, drinking hot water, uh, tea, lemon, you know, anything to get the yeah. out there. Yeah. And you, and you don't sound like yourself. You sound like more like Don LaFontaine in the more early like morning, Don right? <laughs> Yeah, they go, wait a minute, do we hire the same guy? What the right. heck? Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So that's that's I know that that's the way it is in terms of following that. And you also you mentioned um when you do a live where you know explain that process, like when you go on to do a promo, yeah, you don't stop. You're not reading like reading <laughs> a few lines and stopping. They'll like play the piece and you have to follow along live and enter everything in there. Right, exactly. So the script, what the script looks like is everything in caps is what you're reading. That's the, okay. you know, the, the script for the voiceover. And uh, in, um, in, in lowercase, in between those are not the entire sound on tape from a character from the show. It might be the last four or five words that they say, which are going to be your cue right. to go into the next line. So you have everything that you need there. And so whether you go in or, or whether you're doing it on Source Connect or, or ISDN, which ISDN is uh, pretty much gone now, um, you are, they, they start the spot, it's a 30 second spot, for example, you hear three beeps, beep, 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 those ADR beeps. On the fourth imaginary beep, you read that first line, you know, Sunday on an all new Simpsons, you know, or whatever it is. And <laughs> yeah. then sound on tape comes up, 
Then you come in, you get your cue, sound on tape comes up. So being in radio, being a disc jockey and talking up songs that we've done our entire life is probably the best training that you could have for being a promo voiceover yeah. uh, because you're just talking up little intros of songs. You're and hitting, hitting those posts. Right? Hitting the posts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Postmaster General. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and then doing something with the words, uh, you know, because oftentimes in radio, when we would read spots and things like that, mm. we were just reading words, you know, um, you know, making those words mean something and making them mean something to you. So then in turn, you have some emotion with it or whatever it is. And that emotion could just be excitement uh, or, it, you know, it, it could be sadness or, it, you know, tender, whatever it is. Um, but learning how to interpret, you know, the scripts and, and spending time with that. It's right. important. And in promo, you don't have a lot of time. You, you know, you either, they dial you up or you walk in, they, here's the script, you walk in the booth, you're ready. You know, you haven't even really looked at the script yet. You really learn about it in that first read, you know, and you wow. go, oh, okay. You get a number of things. You get what the story is, what's the story arc, what are we talking about here? And, and also just as important, the timing. How much time do I have to say this line before the next S SOT, sound on tape, comes up? So you, you go to school on that first read. Oftentimes they'll use a, a good percentage of it because you're, you know, you're kind of in tune and you just kind of fall into it. Yeah. I always say that a, a good promo, it's very musical. I mean, you, you can feel the beats, you know, and they cut on beats and it helps to drive the promo as well. And if you can get into that rhythm and, and it's really that that rhythm of the promo, you can actually feel when the sound on tape is going to come up because it's coming up where it should be. You yeah. know, it's on beat. You know. did, did you ever have one where you just couldn't do it? I mean, you just flat, you know, you had one where you tried 25 times, you just couldn't get it to go. You know, it just wasn't working for you. You know what? It, you, it, you, you run into those that usually what happens is the writer producer, uh, it might be new to it, uh, and but still very talented and creative. But what they're not doing is the writer producer has to also read the words out loud while they're cutting it. it a lot of times when that happens, they're saying it in their head, you know, <laughs> somebody on an only sentence, you know, they're, they're just doing that and go, oh, okay, that's the time I need for that. Oh yeah, now say that out loud, okay? <laughs> and, and, and fit it in there. And, and that's usually the big mistake. I've never had said, I can't do this. I've never done an Ernie Anderson, who wrote this shit, you know? <laughs> I've never done anything like that. No. <laughs> but you, you know, if you really can't get it in and everybody knows, the audio mixer knows, the room producer knows, then what they do is they call the writer producer and they say, this line does not fit. We, right. we got to come up with a rewrite and they'll rewrite it on the phone right there and say, oh, okay, we can cut this. A lot of time tags, you know, when we would say day and time and actually throw in the central time as well, like Sunday at eight, seven central on right. CBS, uh, that's just not working. Well, okay, maybe we can just say Sunday at eight on CBS mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. And then the rest of the information is in the back plate visually you know, it says it on the screen that it's eight, seven central. So maybe we can get away with not saying it because there's just no time. It's, it's too tight. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot, lot to take in. I remember we used to have Don LaFontaine in studio. We had Tony J. We had all these great wow. voices yes. to come yeah. in. And like Ernie Anderson was the one that would, you, you wouldn't say anything to him. You know, you'd say hi, this and that. He'd grab that copy and kind of that mean voice deliver it you know have you driven a ford lately whatever he exactly. said he was that's angry. it yeah, yeah he was just yeah. angry about everything absolutely but yeah don was great don was yeah. so sweet and um very sweet of course tony J was yeah. such a gentleman he was like, yes yeah you know, he did all that Disney stuff. If you go to the Haunted Mansion and stuff, that, that's, yes. I don't know if it still is, but that was his it, voice. It might still be, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, now I know, you know, in in uh, like uh, Paul Fries, uh, who, who did Haunted Mansion as well, way, way back. 
Yeah. Now they have people, if they've got to change copy, you know, the people that can imitate them um, perfectly, you know? Yeah. So there may be pieces of it that are still the original. You yeah. Know? Uh, well, you you, you know. have such a great style and I'll give you a compliment because I always thought that um, Mark Elliott mm. was a great voice. You know, he did all that happy type sound and that's how you are. You do that great kind of happy upbeat stuff, which sounds so Thank cool. You. Yeah. Thanks. So, Mark, yeah. it was, you know, unbelievable. And yeah. we got to be really good friends. Uh, um, and, and again, another radio guy, you know, yeah, worked, did middays at, at KHJ and, right. you know, made the rounds all around the country at, at all those great radio stations. Um, yeah. And then became uh, the voice of Disney forever. Yeah. You know, forever. I mean, every what, Disney trailer. Yeah, no matter what, you would hear his voice, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I, yeah. I've been, because uh, I, I, the, the movie In a World, that yeah. uh, Lake Bell wrote and directed and starred in. And she cast me in it and Mark Elliott because she wanted a couple of real voiceover people in it because mm -hmm. the, the premise of the movie is about Don LaFontaine. Don La, in the movie, Don LaFontaine at the very beginning of the movie passes away. Mm. And who is going to take over that mantle of in a world? <laughs> yeah <laughs> that that's what the story is and and so we worked um a few days on that and we had our trailers side by side spent you know long days together uh just the sweetest guy and you know i lived in pacific palisades for years right. it's where we raised our kids you know you were in malibu yep um and mark was in the palisades and i would see him you know at the car wash you know in the <laughs> palisades and, and just hang out and talk and he was a natural. He was he was amazing. Yeah, he was amazing. And I think Don LaFontaine didn't he come up with that in a world that was yeah he phrase, wrote it right? he, he wrote, wrote it. it because he started in New York City as a producer of yeah. trailers and and uh, spots radio spots for movies and yeah. he would book the talent and he wrote that copy he wow. wrote in a world wow. and then one day they they uh, kind of like my three o'clock in the morning one they they. <laughs> the voiceover guy didn't show up and it had to be delivered. And so Don, they Don, go in, you, you've got a great voice, go in and do it. And that was wow. it. That's what started his career. Isn't that amazing? That yeah. happens with so many people that happened with uh, Elton John. That's how he got started. Really? Oh yes. my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And wow. Barry Manilow, same yeah. thing, right? These guys that just all of a sudden you're up next up, yeah. you know, you yeah. go and you go do it. And you know, that's what you, you know, you hope for, and that's what, what you, more importantly, you prepare for, for your whole life before that, so that when you get that one little strike, that little bit of luck, yeah, uh, you're ready for it, you right. know, and right. you can perform. Yeah. yeah. So uh, switching gears, Joe, I know, I know you travel around, you're like a, a Brady, Tom Brady, you follow him around wherever he goes. You can't hide that from me, Joe. I know you're you're in you're on the East Coast right now because Tom Brady played his last game there, right? <laughs> What's was up at, with you? <laughs> I was at Brady's last game. I hope it's not. You know, I hope not. Conflicting reports, but yeah, uh, you know, it 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 looks like it, and uh, it was it was it was an amazing game that sadly uh, Brady and. And the Bucks didn't win, but listen, they were playing the Rams, so yeah, right. uh, you know I, right. I I had it both ways. You yeah, know, I, yeah. If LA team could win or whatever, but yeah, I, I do have a thing about Tom Brady. Uh, I just uh, was fascinated by uh, his work ethic, and, and uh, you know, I don't know if I could ever match up to to what he has done in his life, but I sure do want to be like that, and yeah. hope that I've tried to be like that. I mean, the guy never gives up and he doesn't, in his case, age, he doesn't let age really right. hold it back. He just works out harder and yeah. comes up with new ways to work out so that you can be better. He, he's, he's better now than he was, you know, 20 years ago. He it, really it, is. It's he incredible. Really is. Yeah. It's I don't incredible. know how he does it. I know it's diet, but it's like you say, it's yeah. a mindset that he has. It's a whole His thing. exercise uh, plan, uh, you know, everything. And, you know, yeah. I don't think he drinks any alcohol. I mean, whatever it is, that guy's going to go on a bender when he finds <laughs> I'm going to eat donuts and I'm going <laughs> to yeah. drink vodka. You're weighing no 300 ice. pounds. <laughs> and I'm sad that I'm not wearing, because uh, uh, I have a lot of Brady uh, 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 apparel. He came out just... <laughs> I, like about three weeks ago with a, uh, the big launch of Brady. 
And, right. you know, I've got tennis shorts that I wear. I've got shirts. I've, I got it all. Yeah. <laughs> so have you have you met him? Have you met Tom? I've Brady? never met him. No, really? No. Yeah, that would be a kick. Oh, See, yeah. We, I miss that from radio days. You you've met every single artist that has ever been. Right. They all right. came in because they all come in. Yeah. They all come in and they all came in to Kiss FM. You right. couldn't find a bigger radio station. No. My gosh, you know. No. So, uh, you, you know, probably we we would have met him at some point, you know, in radio. Certainly if we were in radio in Boston or in Tampa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So is your is 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 Anne your wife cool with you like kind of following Tom wherever he he goes. I mean, is that okay? She, yeah. She, uh, in fact, when I went to this last game, the tickets were uh, were pretty uh, pricey. I can to imagine go to this, and I and I and I said, you know, the tickets. And she goes, yeah. Do you know how much you talk about Tom Brady? If you don't <laughs> go, I'm going to buy these tickets for you. You have to go. You know. So I did. I went with a with a friend who actually came in uh, from Europe to see the game. <laughs> Another one. Yeah. You guys are like uh, Bruce Springsteen has those types of fans. <laughs> exactly. They go anywhere and everywhere to follow the yeah, boss. Yeah, exactly. Well, other thing I wanted to mention quickly is you're, you also write. You, you wrote a book. You wrote a couple mm -hmm. books, right? You know, yeah, Living uh, on Air, you wrote one. Li Living on Air, Adventures in Broadcasting. And yeah, I, I also wrote chapters along with Don LaFontaine for our friend uh, Joan Baker. Uh, we each wrote chapters in that, um, Secrets of Voiceover Success. Right. And uh, but living on air was something that uh, I had always wanted to do. It's it's a memoir, and, but I, I wanted to do it more as kind of like um, a testament to uh, uh, positive thinking and and working hard and and most importantly not believing in all the people. And there are so many of them. Yeah, who will say you can't do this? Well, I don't know why people have to tell people. Uh, when they have a dream, they say, you can't do that. What, what, what is that? You know, I know, I know. And, and you, you can't listen to that. And I was also looking for something that I wanted to do with Anne and she's a writer. I know she's always wanted to write a novel. Um, she's a news writer and has done it since out of college, you know, for, for big networks. And so I had gone to her with ideas over the years and, and this one, she said, Oh, that would be interesting. So we, we wrote it together. And it was so fun to do. It actually, it's one of those things you, you start on. I remember starting on it in November and I said, okay, our deadline is we have to be done by Valentine's Day. Oh, and then three years later, we were finally done, you know, <laughs> because you start hot and heavy on it and, and then things start to wane, other things come up, you know, whatever, you get back to it, you work hard on it. And then I found that, you know, probably the third time when you get back to it, that's the stretch that you're really going to get to the finish line with it. Oh, yeah. And um, so, yeah, it's a lot of stories, a lot of radio stories in it. <laughs> I uh, love it. A lot of stories about, um, you know, live announcing that, that I've done for the Emmys and Grammys and, and what, the, what that's like. And, and dealing with all the characters in radio and in voiceover and in network TV. I mean... Uh, Paul, how many crazy characters have you bumped into? You know, oh, a million. We should, in fact, we should, uh, Joe, we should write a, a screenplay together. I we, mean, really, absolutely. I mean, yeah, we should, we should, absolutely. You can't invent these characters that no. both of us have bumped into over the no. years. No, all I they can really do, can. You, all you do is you shake your head and then they <laughs> inspire you to write about them you know, <laughs> at some point right. and, and, and kind of steal everything that they did, you know. That, <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you, you know, you take notes every once in a while when somebody says something uh, uh, totally outrageous or does something, I got to remember that. Let right. me just write that down. I know? do that all the time. I always do that. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to, I'm going to have to have you come back on the show. We have to do a whole show on radio stories because oh we could do it between the two of us. We could cover, oh. uh, you know, an endless amount of time. Oh but the show would be fun. Absolutely. You know, to do that. Absolutely. And by the way, I have to tell you, my favorite show that you did was House. I loved House. Oh, cool. Yeah. I love that. I love that character. Yeah. And oh, I yeah. know you did the promos on that. And they I always said, yeah, great. I did. Yeah. Uh, and I did the syndication promos on that, too, uh, yeah. which was really fun. You know, there's so many different layers uh, when you get into this work in, in voiceover. Uh, yeah. And voiceover, Paul, has just blown up. I mean, from when I first got into it in the 80s, uh, you know, there were certain genres that, that you could work in. You could work in animation, you can work in 
uh, narration, long form narration, commercials, right. obviously, uh, promos, trailers, you know, uh, and, and that's it. Now, you know, there's medical narration and um, everything that's, that's on the internet and what's needed for promoting shows that are on demand. And I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And the industry yeah. is huge, yeah, to, huge to the right? point where uh, I'm, I'll be teaching at a conference in Atlanta. This is, I think, the fifth or sixth year of the, of the concert, uh, uh, of the conference. Uh, about 750 people come in from around the wow. world for this conference. And a lot of these people, 90% of them are have a laptop and, uh, you know, a USB microphone in their closet, you know, yeah. in Luxembourg, you know, yeah. and yeah. they've got a, a voiceover career. You right. Know? Right. No, yeah, I mean, it's, it's and what about the videos? Uh, you ever do anything in videos, games or anything like that? Or ever want to, you know, I've never done video games. Uh, yeah. one of the, uh, I think most difficult gigs, uh, you know, you go into a session and it's like, okay, today is dying. Yeah. And, <laughs> You have to, you're going to be killed 50,000 different ways, you know, in this video. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to get you with a, with a sword. Somebody's going to shoot you. Somebody's going to hit you on the head. So you have to go, oh, <laughs> and you have to scream and you, you know, and the people who do it, and I have friends who do it, and, and it's, it, it can be very lucrative because, listen, by far, video gaming yeah. uh, gets the kind of numbers way beyond what movies get oh, there yeah. are you know consumers that consume video games it's just through the roof and those companies are making crazy amounts of money and our union is trying yeah. to organize that because you know they're they're paying people 50 bucks to come in and die you know yeah <laughs> uh, for three hours <laughs> right, and, right and then their voice is gone and they're yeah. you know they're it, it, when you can taste blood after a session you know you're in big trouble <laughs> You know you're not working for ABC when that's right, happening. Exactly. <laughs> hey, buddy, it's thank not going to be a lunch break. There's no five minutes. Five minutes, everybody. Okay, we'll be back. Yeah, none of that. I appreciate having you on, Joe, so much. I know you're busy. I'm sure that your phone, if you look at it now, there's ten promos waiting for you. <laughs> I hope so. That would be so fun. It's magically going to happen now, buddy. But I appreciate Thanks. your time and so much for coming on and, and joining Thank us. You. And I hope you'll come back and do it again with us. We'll do radio I would love stories. To. I would yeah. love to. And congratulations on your amazing career, Paul, and what you're doing with this. Is a, this is so fun and, and it's it's so great. So Thank you, buddy. Have a good time with it. Keep it up. Okay. Love to the yeah. family. We'll talk to you Thank soon. you. Thanks, okay, Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Streaming Legends with PJ. Make sure to subscribe and leave a rating and review. And don't forget to recommend this show to a friend. For more podcasts and online content, go to thisisfunner.com.